Climate change deniers are teetering in their pulpits. Why? Because we're seeing ever-increasing temperatures. We're seeing uh, adverse weather events uh, we've never seen before. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has said that we have to limit temperature increase to about 1.5 degrees Celsius above what it was at pre-industrial levels. We don't do that. We're looking at a global catastrophe. And that catastrophe seems to be approaching more quickly than anyone has uh, had predicted. Well, environmental writer Lloyd Alter has taken the bull by the horns and has uh, written a book in which he examines the carbon footprint of every aspect of our everyday life. As an interesting example, he has taken the carbon footprint associated with having a barbecue chicken delivered to his home. Now, of course, he has to take into account the electricity that is needed to cook the chicken. Uh, he has to take into account the plastic packaging and uh, the footprint uh, associated with manufacturing that. And then, of course, the energy used by the vehicle used to deliver the, the chicken. He discovered that about three quarters of the footprint is associated with that vehicle. It is the gasoline that is being burned that is the uh, major contributor. If it were an electric vehicle, uh, it would have a somewhat smaller footprint, but not that significant because to make an electric car is much more energy intensive than to make a regular car, about 15 to 20 percent more uh, of a greenhouse uh, footprint in order to, to do that. And then, of course, the food itself has a carbon footprint. The chicken has to be raised. You need fertilizer uh, for the crops. You have to calculate uh, the delivery of the fertilizer, the, the uh, tractors that are used uh, to grow the crop and all of that, and then to finally deliver the crop, the energy required to heat the chicken house, uh, the electricity for the, for the lights in the chicken house, processing the chicken, delivering the chicken, uh, all of that. Uh, that has a large footprint, not as large as uh, beef, because cows are ruminants, and they also release methane, which is a very, very potent uh, greenhouse gas. What about a vegetarian diet? Depends. A hot house tomato has a very large carbon footprint. And if you're eating that healthy broccoli that was delivered by airplane, that, of course, has a very significant footprint as well. So it makes sense to try to buy your produce uh, from a local supplier. But then again, you also have to take into account how much you're going to be driving to the place where you are getting the food from that local uh, supplier. Everything has a carbon footprint, including our cup of joe. And uh, of, of course, it's not quite as significant as, as a hamburger. It's about one-tenth the carbon footprint of a, of a hamburger. But there is some carbon dioxide released when you make uh, coffee. If you want to cut down even on that, instead of that cup of coffee, you may want to have an apple. That's, oh, about one-third the carbon footprint of a cup of coffee. But then again, it doesn't have exactly the same effect. And that for today is our cup of joe.